Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a supernatural horror film, Lad of Land. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with T, a marketing officer, renovating his newly bought home in Lad of Land for his family. The next day, T's family arrives, and they are amazed by the village atmosphere as T takes them to Lad of Land. They arrive at the house, where T tours them around. But unlike the others, his daughter is not amused. She expresses that she prefers their old house because she doesn't want to leave her grandmother and friends. T's wife, Pam, tells her daughter to bear with it, since T's decision is for the best of the family's finances, cutting their expenses from the old home, and getting the new home for a huge but bearable mortgage. However, the daughter stubbornly refuses to accept her parents' decision. Meanwhile, their son is enjoying the aircon with a sensor that follows him in his room. This makes him call it a magic eye that detects people and talks about it at dinner. However, the daughter ruins the mood at dinner by telling her brother he's dumb. The couple try to calm her down, but the daughter ignores them. T dismisses his daughter's disrespectful attitude and tries to start dinner, but the daughter disrespects them again by answering her grandmother's call. The couple try to discipline her, but she ignores them and walks out of the dining room. Later that night, Pam tries to comfort T, but her plan takes a turn when she finds her husband planning to romance her. However, T screws up and accidentally burns the bedroom carpet with a candle before their two minutes hormone game can be officially kicked off. As the mood is lost, Pam then comforts T for trying his best for the family. T thanks her and assures her that everything will be fine. Pam then asks if this move is the right call, and T insists that it is as it lessens long-term expenses. Pam trusts his decision and they go to sleep. The following day, Pam gets a call from her mother, and they argue about how T doesn't use the car to take the daughter to school. Before the argument gets worse, Pam calms down and drops the call. Then she hears a noise from the kitchen and follows it to see a cat. She shoes it away, but it only goes when it hears a bell ringing from an old woman in a wheelchair next door. The old woman's face makes Pam anxious, so she looks away as their eyes meet. Pam returns inside and helps T, who arrives home with new furniture. As they take it inside, T steps on the cat's poop, making him so furious that he throws his shoe at the damn cat, but ends up hitting the neighbor's car. The neighbor hears the car noises and confronts him, so T apologizes for the disturbance and explains the situation. The neighbor understands and introduces himself. He then calls his wife and orders her to clean up their cat's poop. As the neighbor's wife comes out, Pam notices the bruises on her neck. Later that night, Pam tells this to T, but he just tells her to mind her own business and goes back to sleep. The next morning, while jogging, T sees a maid cleaning a house in the neighborhood. T tries to hire her as a maid, but he notices that the maid is acting strange. As he tries to get close, he sees mail on the ground in front of the house. He dismisses her weird behavior and leaves after putting the mail in the mailbox. Later that day while coming home from school, Pam and her daughter notice policemen searching the house that he passed by during his jog. Pam listens in on the policeman and hears that the maid's corpse is found stuffed inside a fridge, with her face disfigured by multiple cuts. The maid's death immediately spread like wildfire in the neighborhood, as it is the first homicide in the village with no clear motive. Pam immediately informs her husband about this, so T asks her if their daughter has heard it. Pam tells him that the daughter has no idea of this, so T asks her to keep the news a secret, or else she will find a reason to go back to her grandmother. He then tells Pam not to worry, since homicides are common everywhere, and they should just be careful. But then while jogging the following day, T notices that the people in Lada Land are starting to move out, almost causing the village to become a ghost town. He continues on his jog and notices that the house where the maid died has the water hose running. As he turns the hose off, T is unaware of a presence watching over him. Later that night, while working from home, T and his family hear a commotion outside. As T checks it out, he learns that one of the neighbors is freaking out after seeing someone wandering around their house. As the ambulance takes the freaking man away to the hospital, the daughter discovers the news of the homicide. After seeing the commotion and witnessing the man be taken to the hospital, she later discovers it was because of the recent homicide. The following day, the daughter asks her father why he didn't tell her about the homicide. But he doesn't answer, making them feel more distant. Meanwhile, Pam is with the neighbor's wife at public worship, and they also learn about someone wandering around the community. It turns out that wandering someone was the brutally murdered maid, and that's why the neighbor freaked out. Just then, Pam notices the priest looking at something with a scared expression, before suddenly getting a seizure. Pam looks in the same direction, but she does not find anything. As she goes home, Pam discovers that her daughter is not home, but he has no idea about his daughter's whereabouts, making them agitated. Meanwhile at night, Lada Land security gets an alert that someone is sitting by the road to the entrance. The guard checks it out and gets shocked when he discovers that the said person is the maid. She vanishes as his flashlights hit her, but then she suddenly appears again, now in front of him, scaring his shit away. On the other hand, T goes downstairs to finish his work. 
But then he finds a burglar in his place, thanks to the Airkin sensor. He chases after the burglar and corners him. As he looks closely, T notices that the burglar is wearing a monster mask. The burglar breaks free and throws a ketchup bottle at T, knocking him down. The burglar escapes, and after missing for hours, the daughter returns home, where she's scolded by her father for being home late. Fed up by her father's sermon, she walks out. Noticing that the family is getting more chaotic and violent, T calms himself to prevent further problems. The next day, he buys a gun from a gun store if another burglar comes. Meanwhile, Pam is at home, when she hears the neighbor and his family being noisy. As she listens intently, Pam learns that the neighbor is abusing his son and wife inside the house. As the neighbor exits his house, Pam sees him with blood on his clothes. After a while, Pam invites the neighbor's wife and son to their house. Pam notices more visible bruises on the neighbor's wife's face. She tells the kids to play with the cat, and they strap a camera connected to the computer, to see what the cat sees on the computer upstairs. Meanwhile, the neighbor's wife asks Pam for money to pay for her mother-in-law's checkup, to which Pam agrees, but she hides the favor from T. Later that evening, while heading home, the daughter's friend decides to go inside the house where the maid died. They run inside, leaving the daughter outside. She reluctantly follows her friends while contacting one of them. However, as she gets close, she finds her friend's phone laid down inside a room. Suddenly, her friends snatch her phone away and lock her inside. After that, they run outside, leaving her trapped inside a crime scene. The daughter forces the door to open, but her attempts are no use. Just when she loses hope, the door suddenly unlocks, and then she senses the maid behind her. She immediately runs away from her and returns home to lock herself in her room. The next day, T asks his daughter what happened, so she tells him about her encounter with the maid last night. However, T does not believe her and scolds her for lying about what she did with her friends. Soon after, Pam gets a call from her mother, and they argue about whether what the daughter said is true or not. Pam tries to convince her mom that the daughter is just tired, and drops the call before her mother puts the blame on T for the family chaos. Meanwhile, T's boss informs him that his salary will be coming late this month, causing him to cut more family expenses as he arrives home after work. Due to the stress of lacking money to pay the loan, he starts calling his daughter spoiled, and gets angry at his mother-in-law for raising her to be that way. As T berates Pam's mom, Pam starts looking at him negatively, and discord within the family gets worse. On that same night, T asks his wife where the daughter is, so she tells him that she's been sleeping over with her friends, as advised by her grandmother. This infuriates T as his mother-in-law keeps messing with his family plans and decisions. Later that day, he picks up his daughter from her friends, and scolds her for fooling around with them. The daughter gets rebellious and tries to refuse to get back home, since she's scared of the maid. However, her refusal angers her father even more, prompting him to drag her inside the house where the maid died. The daughter eventually frees herself from her father's grip, and T comes back to his senses and realizes that he went too far. Suddenly, T hears noises around the house, so he follows them, leading him to find the maid's spirit. T finally believes his daughter, but before he can apologize to her the next day, he finds out that his daughter has moved out of the boarding school. It turns out, after hearing what happened to the daughter, the grandmother ordered her to move out. As T realizes that he has caused more family problems, he goes to work to distract himself. However, he finds that the company has closed, and all the employees along with him, have been conned by their boss as he took all the money away. Pam learns this news later that day, and considers working with her former boss as a secretary. However, as T hears this after his job shift, he thinks that her job as a secretary would cause a hormone affair. Later that night, as they enter their bedroom, T takes out his gun from the drawer, and suddenly shoots his wife in the head. Realizing what he had just done, he approaches his wife, but she suddenly looks at him while screaming his name. T then snaps back to reality, and tries to find a job to fix the family's finances. He soon finds a clerk position at a convenience store, so he immediately signs up. However, he gets fired that same day, after beating up a shoplifter. As he comes home devastated, T considers using his children's educational funds to support their family. His thoughts get interrupted, when he sees his son locked in a closet by the neighbor's son as a prank. This angers T, so he drags the kid to their house, and explains what has happened to the neighbor. However, he is beyond shock, as the neighbor slaps his son in front of him. He dismisses that as it's not his family affair, and goes job hunting instead. After a while, he returns home from his job hunting. He notices beside his laptop, the camera used on the cat is on a table. He checks the footage in the camera, and learns that the cat wasn't carrying it. Instead, it was the maid, who turns out to be following his son. T then rushes to the house where the maid died, and finds a bloody fridge. Suddenly, something inside the refrigerator tries to force its way out. T thinks it's his son, but right then his wife calls him, telling him that their son is at home, prompting him to run his smelly ass away in fear, as he realizes it might be the haunting maid. 
It turns out, the same broke burglar broke into the house for money previously, and killed the maid after being caught. After that, the maid's body was stuffed into the refrigerator. This is how the community became haunted afterward. Later that day, T asks his son who brought him inside the house. The son reveals that it was the neighbor's son, so T confronts the neighbor once more. However, the neighbor kicks him out, and injures him using the gate. T cannot retaliate, and his stress gets pent up. Soon after, he spots the neighbor's cat, and crushes the cat by the doorway to release his stress. The next day, while taking the trash out, Pan notices that the neighbor's family is gone, and their house is ruined. Just then, the neighbor's wife shows herself abruptly to Pam, and disappears quickly into thin air. Later that evening, Pam finds out that her husband uses the children's education funds to find a good job. Seeing him struggle, she offers to help, but T thinks her money came from her affair. This causes them to be distant, even when they go to sleep. While asleep, T hears noises from their yard, but he dismisses them, as he thinks it's harmless. The following day, Pam interrupts her husband's interview, and informs him that the neighbor and his family are dead. T immediately goes to the neighbor's house, only to discover that the neighbor has brutally murdered his wife and son before killing himself. After the initial autopsy, T also learns that their neighbors have been dead for a long time. This causes Pam to want to leave the haunted village, but T refuses to abandon their house, as it's a waste of money. After the neighbors murder suicide, the surroundings in Lata Land start looking old and abandoned, as more people realize something wrong in the village. Later that night, while her family is asleep, Pam is still awake, thinking about the recent events in Lata Land. Her thoughts get interrupted when she hears more supernatural occurrences, but this time, instead of the maid, she hears the neighbor's son playing with her son. This creeps her out, so the following day, she tells her son to stop playing with her imaginary friend. However, the son stubbornly refuses, prompting Pam to be violent towards him. T calms down his wife, who quickly realizes what she has done. Desperate to leave Lata Land, Pam asks for her mother's help. After a while, the daughter returns home as her school year ends. But then, things take a sudden turn. The spirits of the neighbor's wife and his mother welcome her, causing her to be hospitalized from the shock. Fed up by the family's supernatural occurrences, Pam lashes out at T, and tells him that she will take their daughter to her mother's. T finally prioritizes his family and agrees to Pam's decision, before anything worse happens. As they return home later that night, a storm arrives at Lata Land. After checking the state of the house, T returns to his daughter's room and finds her missing. He then remembers that his wife mentioned their son's imaginary friend is the neighbor's son. He then heads to the neighbor's house and finds traces of the neighbor's family. He finds evidence that their family was once happy, but was affected by this environment in Lata Land, which makes people violent. Just then, as he looks at the family's drawing made by the neighbor's son, the son's spirit shows himself, with a huge hole in the face caused by a bat. T runs away, but bumps into the neighbor's ghost wife and mother, with their face mauled by the bat's attack. Finally, he meets the neighbor, a vengeful spirit filled with self-guilt and regret. T asks where his son is, but the neighbor attacks him outright, making T shoot to defend himself. Meanwhile, Pam follows her husband's traces, after hearing the commotion at the neighbor's home. Soon after, she hears gunshots as T shoots the neighbor, and she goes there. As she arrives, she sees her husband shooting at the wardrobe where their son is, as their son has been playing hide-and-seek with the neighbor's son. Although shocked, Pam gets their son from the closet, and attempts to wake him up. Meanwhile, T is in despair as he comes back to his senses, and realizes what he has just done. Fortunately, their son wakes up, and Pam is relieved. However, guilt consumes T, and he still believes that he killed his son, prompting him to commit suicide. After the incident, Pam brings her kids back to her mother. She then tells her son and daughter how their father wanted the best for them and never gave up on them, despite confessing that she didn't want to have kids since it ruined her dreams. The film ends with a flashback of T's happy moments with his family. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.